Welcome to my Elephant Experience VR 180 film. Now this is best viewed using a headset and headphones. However, if you just have your phone or your computer, you can scroll around and look anywhere at any time. Now VR 180 is only the front half of VR, so you actually can't see what's behind the camera. It's an immersive experience, however, it's only half the globe, so it's a little bit different. Now this film is my experience in Thailand with the elephants. And if you wanna see the full documentary about working with Bee's Elephant Sanctuary, then I have another VR 180 film that is down in the description. Now the audio that you're gonna hear in this film is from an interview that I did with Emily. She is one of the co-founders of Bee's Elephant Sanctuary. And we talked about elephant tourism and it's more complicated than just you shouldn't go ride an elephant. There is a lot more that goes into what's happening in this industry. So sit back, relax, awesome visuals of elephants. I got to trek through the jungle for days and go and find these elephants in their natural habitat. And so you're gonna get up close and personal with these elephants in nature. All right guys, let's get into it. I'm here with Emily out in the jungle and we've been trekking following the elephants for a little while now. Why did you start the sanctuary? Well, I am trained as a zookeeper and uh, one of the things that I really, really wanted to do was work with elephants. So I came out to Thailand thinking, you know, Thailand is the home of elephants, land of smiles. I want to get out there. I want to see um, the elephants. And so when I got here, I realized that there was actually quite a lot of welfare issues for the elephants in Thailand and that many of the elephants were abused, neglected, um, not necessarily um, by the owners on purpose, but because that's just the way it is and they don't have the same education and they don't have the same resources. So I noticed that there was a need um, for something like this to be set up and I met Berm, my husband, and he was a tour guide in Chiang Mai and he shared a very similar interest and uh, well actually he's the one that got me started on this because he said I want to set up a community-based program in my family village and I can't do it alone. So basically I was like well yeah I'll get in on that and I'll, I'll do what I can. You've adopted a, a hands-off policy yes. and is that radical in the world of elephant tourism? It is, it is. A lot of people thought that we were crazy, uh, some people didn't understand why and um, well look at them. These are wild animals and they have worked their whole lives for humans and some of them have come from okay backgrounds where they had families that worked just as hard as they did and they were forced into difficult situations and the families had to work really hard to make their income. When the logging was banned in Thailand, a lot of elephants were displaced and so were their families. There was nowhere for them to go. And so um, tourism boomed and elephants went into riding. And over the last sort of 10, 15 years, it's become quite popular to stop the riding and move towards a walking, bathing, feeding, mud bathing program. Elephants in captivity have been conditioned to be around humans. So what we try to simulate here is a natural environment for the elephants. And one of the reasons why we went hands off was because Mei Kham, the first elephant that we retired here, was highly strung. She'd lost both of her calves. Um, she was really badly beaten when her second calf passed away from King Cobra Bite. And she basically became very challenging to work in the camps. Mei Kham would uh, throw tourists off her back, she'd chase people and uh, it became quite apparent to the owner that she couldn't be worked in tourism anymore. And this stemmed from, you know, going from a life of logging where she was living in a natural environment but still working quite hard to then being forced around crowds of people. These are wild animals and they have the temperament of a wild animal and the only way you can stop that is through conditioning and through training. So 
Maycom's owner took her out of work and he kept her chained in the forest. Chaining elephants is extremely important to stop them from wandering onto people's farms and to keep them safe. Unfortunately, if the owner or the person in charge of looking after elephants isn't available or around all the time, or if the elephant's too difficult to manage, then the elephant spends too much time on the chain. And that can cause all kinds of things like depression and cause them to have weight gain, muscle loss. May Khan, when she was retired to be, she's our first elephant. Uh, she, it was very clear to us that she didn't really want to be around people. She's quite happy for us to observe her from a distance, but she doesn't want us to be around her, um, close to her, patting her, feeding her. She does love her food. <laughs> All elephants love eating, but um, May Khan made it quite obvious to us that she just wanted to be an elephant again. So that sort of, over the years, we, we did keep a small interaction program in the beginning. Um, so people come out, observe the elephants of an afternoon, they could feed them and they could bath them. We phased that out completely in 2018. And that's because we feel like we have a duty to these elephants after they've spent their whole lives working for humans. This is a place where they can come to retire and just be elephants again. So what would you say to a tourist that wants to come to Thailand and have an experience with elephants? Does the hands-off provide the same kind of experience that you know, these other sanctuaries are providing? The hands-off experience is very different because you're actually experiencing elephants doing what they would do in the wild. When you're in a high-touch facility where you can pet them, feed them, bath them, often the elephants feel like they're in a controlled environment, so they feel like if they don't do it, what might happen to me? So they just follow the same routine every day, which then, it's not terrible but it's also not the best for the elephant's welfare. So what we decided to do here is to give the elephants more space because just like us, elephants want to have their own personal space. Um, they can harm you, they will kill. And so by allowing them this much space, it also keeps the mahouts safe as well. The mahouts don't have to stand close, the mahouts don't have to intervene and uh, be constantly telling the elephants, stop, walk that way, get away from the tourists because they want to keep the tourists safe. It's less stressful for the elephants, it's safer for the people and it's safer for the mahouts that are placed working with these elephants. It's the most dangerous job in the world. If you enjoyed this experience with the elephants, then I highly suggest checking out my full documentary from my time in Thailand with Bees Sanctuary. I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can find the documentary and also where you can find out more information about bees. Now, they're doing amazing things at their sanctuary to help promote ethical elephant tourism. And if you ever find yourself in Thailand, I highly suggest going and checking out their sanctuary and going and experiencing these elephants for yourself. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.